Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, my brother, good evening. God bless you. Good evening. Thank you. How is everything? How is your sister doing? She's fine. Okay. And uh, every member of the family. Okay. All right. Uh, we have just about... Uh, we have we are four we have four now online. Okay, let's just give it about uh, two minutes, probably. Then we'll take we'll start off. Pastor Benjamin, good evening, sir. Pastor Benjamin, good evening. Okay. Uh, good evening, is it Pastor Peter? Is Pastor, Pastor Shegun on the line? Oh, Pastor Shegun, yeah. I will call you after the service. All right, sir. Good evening, mm, sir. After the prayers, yeah. Good day. No problem. Right, I'll sir. call you after the prayers. All right, sir. Sorry, I haven't called yet, but as soon as we finish prayers, I'll call you. Okay, if you sir. see me on the mute, it's because kids are running around. <laughs> this way. Amen. Yes, sir. Mm. All right, let's pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Father, we want to appreciate you tonight. King of kings, we honor you. Lord of Lord, we appreciate you because you are the living God. Thank you, Father, once again because of your love and your compassion. Thank you because of the way you have been taking good care of us. Thank you for all your numerous and uncountable blessings towards our lives. Thank you for all your mighty supernatural investments in every one of our lives, in our family, in our nation, and in what? In everything that we lay our hands upon. Thank you so much for all that you have done. We have come this night, oh God, to give you, to return the glory back unto you and to commune with you. Father, we are praying, O oh God, that you will strengthen everyone, brothers and sisters, pastors, leaders, everyone all together. You will energize us. You will quicken us by your mighty spirit and power tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, O oh God, that for this great assignment, Holy Spirit divine, we cannot do without you. We need your help. We don't even know how to pray as we ought. But the Bible says that the Spirit of God intercedes for us according to the will of God. We're praying once again that the Spirit of God will stir us up, we quicken us, we help us, we help our infirmities, even to pray, to pray and pray through tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All our brethren that are here to join, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will help them so that all of us together will join us together and by the grace of God, every mountain in our lives, every mountain in every family, every mountain that are staring us on the face tonight by your mighty power, those mountains, they will be moved out of our lives tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Tonight, by the special Hallelujah. grace of God, we are together once again as our usual practice. And I want to say that our coming together is not for formality. <laughs> we have a goal. We have an objective. We have what we want to really achieve. And that is we want to promote God's kingdom. We want to promote the glory of God in everything that we are doing. Remember what the scripture says, that whatever thing we do, whether we eat or we drink, or whatever we do, we should do all to the glory of God. So the purpose why we are here tonight is to, to glorify God, that everything, as the testimonies are coming in, of the wonders of our God in our lives, in our midst, Everything is meant to glorify God in our lives. 
and as God is doing wonders in every one of us altogether, it is expected that we return the glory back to God, not to glorify any man, not to glorify the preacher, not to glorify the coordinator, not to glorify anyone. Of course, God put us there for a reason, but all the glory must go back to the almighty God. That's why tonight, see what the Lord has done for us. Thinking about all the journey so far from January to this time, it's not a small journey. For is he talking about his love? Is he talking about the love that he has for us? Many of us, when you look back again and you begin to recount the kind of life we were living before, it was a wretched life. It was a terrible life. Life of drunkenness. Life of humanizing. Life of immorality. Life that was totally saturated and controlled by idolatry. And all manner of evil things. We will go to the river to go and wash ourselves in the river and do all manner of things. Do a lot of incantation do a lot of concussion here and there, yet God in his love, in his mercy, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to us to deliver us. No wonder the Bible says, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We want to bless God. We want to say, Father, thank you once again, because while we were here sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. He died to liberate us, the just for the unjust, the righteous for the unrighteous, the holy for the unholy, the pure for the impure. He died to take our place. He carried all the load, all the luggages of our sin, of our iniquity, and all the burden, all those troubles of our lives. He carried everything to the cross, and yet he made an open declaration, and he said, it is finished. Why don't you open your mouth and begin to appreciate God? I say, Father, once again, oh God, thank Father, you for thank the you. great gift you have thank given you. to all. Let's lift up our voices thank to the Lord this night. Let's show thank our praise. The Bible tells thank us, you, us we love us. We must love all the love him. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord and praise him once again to all the Christ. Let's give him all the, all him all the adoration. He's a that great God, a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Is the God of all power, is the God of all grace. Open your mouth and reference him tonight. Thank you, God. I bless you. Thank you, Lord. Almighty God, I adore you. Almighty God, I lift up your name. I praise you for your mercy. Of course, of your divine name. Thank you once again, oh God, because healing demons. Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died to liberate us from the bondage of sin, from the bondage of the devil, from the yoke of iniquity and unrighteousness. Thank you once again because of the sacrifice of Christ. On our behalf, O Lord, blessed Jehovah God, we appreciate you. Almighty God, we reference you tonight. We are grateful unto you, God. Blessed be your name, O dear Father God. Because, O God, look at all of the door. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Thank you. Amen. Let's take this song together as we worship the Lord tonight. He is Lord. He is Lord, amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord, hallelujah. Every knee shall be the so Christ is love. He 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 is love. Hallelujah. Every 
Amen. Amen. We want to bless the name of the Lord once again. Look at all the benefits that Calvary has offered unto you and to me. Is he talking about the benefit of redemption? Whereby, you know, once upon a time we were all slaves to sin. We serve no. sin. We drink sin as if we are drinking water. Of course, we, we were eating sin as if we are eating food. It was our second nature. It was our original nature. It was controlling our lives. Not until when Christ came, liberate us from the slave market of sin. Look at the benefit of Calvary. Benefit of redemption. Benefit of salvation. Benefit of cleansing. Benefit of sanctification, benefit of purity, benefit of healing and deliverances. Why don't you open your mouth and begin to say, Father, thank you once again, oh God. No wonder David said, he said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and yes. all that is within me. Bless yes. his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Look yes. at the benefit of preservation and protection. Oh, Look at bless what I've done for us I all those fathers. We no want to say, Father, thank you once I again, oh God. You are such a wonderful God, God, a gracious God, God a loving God, God the God of all power. Open your mouth and begin to praise him tonight. Let's worship God. Let's honor him. Let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the adoration. Let's give him all the praise. He's the God that changes times and seasons. He has all the power to change our situation. He has all the power to give us testimony. He has the power to raise up. He has the power to promote. He has the power to lift up. Open your mouth and begin to testify. In the name of the Lord, let's give him all the praise tonight. Oh Lord, our God, we praise you. Almighty God, everlasting Father, Lord, we worship you. Lord, Thank you, God. By the grace of God tonight, we have come to the Lord. If you look at the platform very well, we put the theme there. The theme there is moving from shame to fame. Moving from shame to fame. And I want to tell you that God will remove every form, anything that resembles shame. Everything that has made us to be crying. Everything that has made us to be shedding tears in our, in our homes, in our individual lives in our family of course tonight is a night that god will take away every shame and then he will remove that shame and turn it to fame a time Amen. that god will take a transformation Amen. in our life i look at the book of isaiah please if you have a copy of the bible there just go along with me and i want you to mark it in your bible as we are going to read this passage of the scripture in isaiah chapter 61 Isaiah chapter 61, that's our text for tonight that we are looking at, and we are going to turn it to prayer. Isaiah chapter 61. It's possible that before now, people have been making caricature of you. It's possible that before now, people have been laughing at you, and they have been asking that where is your God? Our God is in heaven. Our God answers prayer. Our God is mighty. Our God Amen. is the awesome, not powerful God. And it's the God that Never, never fail. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Isaiah chapter 61, I want to read from verse 6. In Isaiah chapter 61, I read from verse 6. He said, but ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Priest Amen. there is in plural. That's the promise Amen. of God for you and for me. Yes. Every one of us on this, uh, uh, on this platform, as long as you are born again, as long as you are named by the name of the Lord, 
as long as you have confessed your sin before the Lord, as long as Christ has come into your life and is the one that reigns and rules in our life, in our heart, he said, ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men yes. shall call you the ministers of our God. Everyone that is listening to me, look at yourself. You are the priest of the Lord. You are Amen. the priest of our God. Amen. You shall eat the riches of the Gentile. Look at the benefit that is attached to your life, to my life. He says, we shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Amen. The unbelievers? Who are the, who are the Gentiles? The sinners that are there? Who are the Gentiles? Those who are getting, who are having the, all these uh, things through the crook means. He said, we shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And then he said, in their glory shall ye boast yourself. Now, particularly now, look at that verse 7. That's where I'm going to. Verse 7, the very first sentence, that, that the very first phrase that come there, I wanted to take note of that. In that verse 7, he said, for your shame, ye shall have double. Double, double. Double Amen. blessing. Amen. Double breakthrough. Double, Amen. you know, Amen. double Amen. coming our way. That in place of shame, even though there have been a lot of shame, a lot of reproaches, a lot of disgrace in the time past because of one thing or the other. Let me tell you, there are many things that bring shame into people's lives. <laughs> and you begin to identify the one where, you, where your category falls into. What are the things that have been bringing shame? In fact, when we even talk about this shame, what is shame all about? Shame is another name for disgrace. What are the things that the enemy have been using to disgrace you? What are the enemies that the enemy has been using to mess you up? That when you sit in the company of people, they say, no, 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 no. We don't want you because you do not belong to our status. You do not belong to our group. That is the ghost. They just naturally develop hatred for you. Why? That is that is something that makes that, that brings disgrace. Shame means disgrace. It means to be embarrassed. And you feel embarrassed that uh-uh, why is my own different? If I go here, that is a mark of rejection. If I go there, that is a mark of rejection. If I go there, embarrassment every now and then. Not, not even positive embarrassment now, negative embarrassment, embarrassing you, insulting you, and assaults all through. And uh, you know. Somebody can be can be put to shame. Somebody can be disgraced because of unpaid debt. Because maybe it's, 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 it's owing people. Let me give you an example in the Bible. I know many of us here, we are Bible scholars. But let's look at the scripture very well. Time will not permit me to begin to go through. In 2 Kings chapter 4, you know that story of that woman? No, the wife of one of the sons of the prophets. The, 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 the prophet himself died and he was owing a lot of people. And when after the man, the, the sons of the prophet had died, the people that don't say the, the man was owing, they came and they were putting pressure on the wife. Come and pay our debts. Come and pay the debt that your husband owe us. And the woman did not have anything. In fact, those people, they were bent that they want to carry the, the children of that woman. The grown up the children, they want to turn them, they want to enslave them so that they can pay ransom for that money. And the woman ran to Elisha. He said, Please come and deliver me, come and help me out in this situation. Elisha said, What do you have? The woman said, I have only just uh, all those uh, empty cans, all those empty bottles and all that. Elisha said, Go and borrow, go and borrow as many as you can. And then she, she, she did what, what the man of God did. And then the man of God said, take it home. And then begin to turn the something, turn it, turn the. And as she was doing that, oil was flowing until there was nothing left again. And then she went back to Elisha. That, oh, I don't want to ask me to do. And the oil stayed. Elisha said, go and sell. Go and sell those things. And after that, the money you realize then, pay your debt. And the, the remaining one, use it to take care of your, yourself and your family. That means she had more than excess. Even after selling all those things, there are people that are going through a lot of debts. Even as we are talking here now, debt everywhere. You want to go to the right, you'll be running away. You run to one corner because you know that somebody that you are owing is coming. And then you go to one corner because you are always afraid. Ah, if this person should see me, he can embarrass me in the market. He can embarrass me in supermarket. He can embarrass me on the campus. He can embarrass me one way or the other. You are always afraid because of that unpaid debt. That, they can, that can bring shame. What about those who have been married for years 
and yet there is no issue. And yet there is one year had gone, two years, five years had gone, ten years had gone, no child in the family. It can bring shame, and the in-laws are putting pressure. Are you a wood? Are you an iron? That you come, you are just eating our our son's food. You are just eating this, eating that, and there is nothing to show for. That was the case yeah. of a of a, of, a, of Anna, Anna and Sarah. Yet yeah, God looked upon them, and then eventually He opened the book of remembrance for them, and they had their own children. What Amen. about those who are having in their family? They have untimely death, premature death. Every now and then, it can bring shame, and people begin to say, "See, you say you are serving God." Why are all these strange things happening in your home, in your family? Mm. It can bring shame. What about those who are going through hunger? I'm telling you, I read something that was a particular video I just saw this night, this evening. And uh, those be that video, in fact, the person that, that released that video was crying. In Nigeria here now, people are already eating, they are eating their children, as it was in the days of Samaria. Two women, they ate their children simply because there was nothing for them to eat. In fact, it was captured. And I say, ah, in this country, it's already happening because of the economic hardship, because of the starvation, because of hunger. Do you know it can go, it's getting, almost getting to that time. That can bring shame to the family. And then not only that, what about the family that is being ravaged with poverty? Every, you can see it all over them. You see it upon their children. Children, the kind of shoe they will wear, the kind of clothes that they will wear, all the tattered clothes very almost equivalent as if they are wearing rags. And you say, ah, uh, ah, uh, and this one, they say they are serving God. And they say they are serving God. It can bring shape. It can bring disgrace into one's life. What about wretchedness? When somebody is wretched, what about those who are having delay in marriage? And yet they have been praying and praying. Yet there is no husband. 30 years are gone. They are getting older. And they are almost getting to the age of menopause. And yet there is no husband. And what about the brother? The same thing is equally happening. That can bring shape. And people are saying, are you, are you, are you, are you a wood? You cannot, I mean, you, are, you can no longer perform as a, as a man or as a woman. And so many other things that people begin to say. That is why we want to pray. What about in the family where we have wayward children? They are serving God, husband serving God, wife serving God, yet yeah, the children are wayward. And the children are not obeying the word of God, just like the children of Eli. And th that is why we are going to pray tonight. What about those who are having joblessness? Do you know it? And it's given room for the enemy to begin to say, oh, you say you are serving God. Why is it that your, job, your God cannot give you a job? Of course, our God can do it. He can do all things because with God, all things are possible. That's why we want to pray tonight. We want to cry to God. Tonight, God will take us from shame to fame. Remember Amen. people go through that, that system. What about Joseph in the Bible? He had that similar experience. Out of hatred, out of nothing, people just developed hatred for him. His brethren hated him. They sold him into exile. They sold him into slavery. And they sold him to the Ishmaelite. From Ishmaelite, he found himself in the hands of Potiphar. From the hands of Potiphar, he landed in the prison. And eventually, God began to remember that man. And eventually, he turned his shame to fame. He became a famous man. In fact, he became the prime minister of a whole land of Egypt at that time. That is what God can do. What about a man called Jabez? He was born with sorrow. A man that was born with sorrow, the mother pronounced sorrow upon his life. Sorrow was following him. If he go to the right, sorrow was there. If he moved to the left, sorrow was there. If he go to the front, sorrow was there. If he moved to the back, sorrow was there. If he, cut, if he marry wife, sorrow was there. Everywhere was surrounded by sorrow. And eventually that man cried to God and said, God, oh Lord, it is time you change my destiny. And of course, that man, the Bible says, he became more honorable than all his brethren. Tonight, the Lord will do something great in our life. Amen. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Oh, it's Amen. time for us to call upon the name of the Lord. It's time for us to pray and say, God, Lord, my eyes are upon you tonight, oh God. It is time that you take away every shame, every disgrace out of my life. All the things that, that, thing that the enemy, Jesus. all those appellations of shame. All those appellations of disgrace, all those yeah. appellations of embarrassment, all those appellations of insults uh, that has come into our life, yeah, into yeah, our yeah, family. Yeah. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight and say, God of heaven, oh God, open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. I expect us to pray, brethren, 
Open your mouth and begin to call upon the name. I want to hear us praying. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Except you did not understand what I've said so far. Open your mouth and pray to God and say, Father, once again, Lord, I come to you once again this hour tonight, oh God. Lord, move me from shame to shame. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it is time for us for God to us and to honor me. Your mouth and begin to pray tonight. Everything that constitutes shame in our life, in our family, in our businesses, in our career, we want to tell the Lord in the name of Jesus. Spirit and power. Thank you, Lord. I'm asking, oh God, let the power of God begin to rule everything out of our life. Open your mouth and begin to pray. We have limited time to pray. I want you to pray with understanding. I want you to pray with assurance that God is answering your prayer tonight. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Oh Lord, take away every chain. Oh Lord, take away every disgrace. Oh Lord, take away anything causing sorrow and sadness in my soul. Mighty God, take it away tonight, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and begin to pray to God and say, God, oh Lord, arise to me, to God in your power. Oh my Father God, in Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. In that verse 7 of Isaiah 61, where we read before, he said, for your shame, ye shall receive double. Amen? Amen. Amen. For your shame, I want you to personalize it. Believe the word of the Lord. Please, I'm not the one that wrote it down. It's the word of the Lord. It's the word of God. Stand by this word. He said, for your shame, ye shall receive double. Ye shall have double. What Amen. is he talking about? Double glory, double Amen. honor, double Amen. breakthrough, double Amen. blessing. Open Amen. your mouth and begin to pray to another state, God of heaven, oh God. I stand by the word of God, oh God of heaven, to the mind, but he said, for your shame, oh God, to the name of God. of the scripture and i want your faith to cleave to it you know why i'm saying that jesus christ said in john chapter 14 verse 13 he said if ye shall ask anything anything please underline that word anything if you you mention your name put your name there you are the one you are the you that jesus christ is talking to if you maybe your name is margaret put it there Maybe your name is Victor. Put it there. Maybe your name is uh, is uh, Joseph. Put it there. He said, if you, Joseph or Margaret, shall ask anything in my name, he said, I will do it. And Amen. I believe the Lord. Because he has Amen. given us a promise. He said, for Amen. your shame, ye shall have double. Double blessing. Double, Amen. you know, double promotion. Double Amen. exhortation. Look Amen. at our sisters who have been married for many years. And yet there is no issue. Look at the brothers there. 
that have been married for many years and there is no issue. Maybe we have some of them in our platform or perhaps we are standing to represent some of them. We want to pray tonight and say, God, tonight, tonight, and no, it's enough of shame. Every shame and reproaches in those families, let everything be wiped out tonight. Let the young lady, the young companies be broken tonight. All the young companies and barriers, let everything come to an end in those families. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight.